Hello guys, what's going on? My name is Stone and welcome to Accelerate. This is our eighth episode uh, all about pivot tables um, in VBA. So I've got some friends from South Africa that requested this video as well as a friend from Egypt. So I'm very happy that my uh, channel is reaching far out into the world and without further ado, let's get into pivot tables using a VBA. So I'm at my desktop here I'm going to create our new file, a new Excel file, and I'm just going to call it a pivot table. All right. And guys, um, we've got 92 subscribers currently as well. So if you can hit that 100 subscriber mark, I'm going to give you a special episode uh, all about Excel and you guys are going to really enjoy it. Thank you very much for our current 92 subscribers. It's much appreciated. Please spread the word and let's get into this pivot table one. So I'm just going to go here in sheet one. I'm going to call sheet one my data tab. So I'm just going to call it data and I'm just going to add in another sheet as well. And I'm going to call it a dynamic range. Just like that, I'm going to head back to my data sheet and let's start from A5. So let's say we've got a uh, data here in our data sheet. We're going to go to A5, we're going to say date. In B, we're going to say item that's been sold, let's start selling items. So that's the item description. Here we've got a unit sold. Let's say we've got a unit price. And then let's call this one the sales amount. Okay, so I'm just gonna space it out nicely as well. So let's say we're selling three types of uh, materials here. So let's say uh, we're selling items here. Let's say on the we sold them in May. Uh, we sold a computer. The units that we sold was five and the unit price was, let's say, $300 for argument's sake. So the sales amount is equals the unit sold multiplied by the unit price. Just enter that, so that gives us a nice amount here. So let's say we also sell speakers and gear, computer gear as well. So I'm just gonna drag down our dates here and unit sold, also gonna drag down unit price. I'm just gonna give it a, let's go speakers went for 150 and gear went for 50. And you can just double click on this little drop down button and it will populate that uh, formula automatically. Okay, so this is our complete set of data. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight everything here. I'm gonna drag it down to give a little bit more data here. All right, obviously our unit price should stay the same. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that the same. Okay, so that's a nice piece of data that we've got here. So let's try to build in a nice pivot table uh, in VBA. So I know the struggles about around pivot tables. You do a pivot table, it looks nice and sleek, but once you get more data or more columns and rows, now you have to go and redo this pivot table every single time. So a nice shortcut is to do it in VBA. I'm gonna show you the code right here now. So I'm gonna go into my developer tab. Once again, if you don't know how to reach this developer tab, description's up above um, for my previous videos showing you exactly how to activate this developer tab. For you that have the developer tab open, let's get into it. So I'm gonna go into my Visual Basic here, and then I'm gonna insert a module once again. So I'm gonna right click on the VBA project here, and I'm gonna go Insert Module. Oh, unfortunately, I inserted a user form, so let's just delete that. I'm just going to remove the user form. And I'm just going to insert a module. There we go, module one. So that gives us that nice clean canvas that we're going to paste our code in. So guys, I'm going to go into my code here now. So I'm going to go into my files here. And I've got a cheat sheet here. So I've left this cheat sheet for you down in the video descriptions down below. So you can go and grab that and copy and paste it into this exercise. And I'm going to walk you through the code as well. So you're going to highlight everything. And we're going to hit Control C. I'm going to minimize my notepad. I'm going to go back into my Excel VBA interface. And I'm going to hit Control V. So that 
pastes our uh, macro code in nicely as well. So this is the macro that we're going to create. The name of the macro is create pivot table dynamic range because we want that, that dynamic ability to, if we have an extra column or extra row coming into our data, you just hit one button and it creates that pivot table in a magical way to put in all the data that you need. So let's walk through this. So first of all, I'm gonna clear the pivot table that we create firstly, and then I'm gonna declare some variables as well. And I'm gonna declare um, the object variable so you can read through this code as well. I'm going to identify source and destination worksheet. So remember I created sheet one and renamed it data. So that's our source. And I'm going to put our pivot sheet into the second sheet, sheet two that we called, uh, that we named dynamic range. So this is just straightforward code to say VBA, listen, this is where our data sits. This is where our data is going. It's going to obtain an address and destination of cells. It's going to identify the first row. Remember, it's going to start at five, row five, and it's going to go for our first column, the first column, as well. And then it's going to find the last row and last column as well of our source data range. It's going to obtain the address of source data, and then it's going to create our pivot table as well as add we're going to add organize and format pivot table fields as well so it's quite a mouthful but this is straightforward code that's going to create our pivot table and going to save you amounts of time in your projects using pivot tables so i'm going to exit our pivot uh, our visual basic interface here and here in a1 i'm just going to insert a, a normal form control button so that's the button there. I'm just going to paste it in here. So it's going to automatically show us to assign a macro. So we just created that macro, create pivot table dynamic range, and we're going to hit OK. So there is our button there. And now I can just highlight this caption here. Just going to highlight that. I'm going to delete button one, and I'm saying create pivot table. All right. I'm going to exit design mode. Everything looks nice and sleek. So in our dynamic range currently, we have no data here. So now I'm going to click on this button, create pivot table. I think it happened. Let's see, it, it was so quick. So let's see dynamic range. Oh, this is awesome. There's our pivot table sitting ready and waiting. So it takes our data. So we sold five computers here and we sold five computers here. So that should give us 10, the unit price was 300, so the total should be 3,000. So if we go to dynamic range, there it is. 10 computers sold, and the sales amount was 3,000. Oh, this is beautiful, it's gonna save you so much time. But this is the kicker. I'm gonna go back to my data tab. Let's say we're adding, um, let's say earphones, we're selling earphones as well. So I'm just gonna pull down the data here. I'm gonna say earphones, and we sold two, at the unit price of 20 and you'll see automatically it updates the sales amount i'm going to just hit create pivot table once again remember we we worked in a dynamic code here as well so i'm going to go back to my dynamic range and you'll clearly notice the earphones we sold to the sales amount of 40 so this pivot table does exactly what we need to do it's going to save a lot of time guys so let's say we want to track returns as well so i'm going to go in column f i'm going to hit Returns. So we want to see the quantity that's been returned by customers as well. So let's say they return two computers here, three speakers, one um, piece of gear, one computer, one speaker, one gear, one earphone. Just for argument's sake. Let's see if we hit that create pivot table once again and we go back to dynamic range. Ah, you'll see our returns doesn't add up here in the D column. But if you're going to click on the pivot table here, there we go. I'm going to just going to highlight this pivot table once again, and we're going to go back into our code. So I can go back to my Visual Basic, and then in this section here, add, organize, and format pivot table fields. I'm going to go ahead and from end with, I'm going to go to with here. I'm going to Control C, I'm going to hit Enter, Control V. So that will create another code. Just gonna make it look nice as well. And in sales amount here, I want to track the return. So remember, we put in that extra column. So we're gonna say return, returns, and position should be free. There we go. 
I'm going to exit our table here. I'm going to go to data. I'm going to create pivot table once again. Oh, it shows a bug. So let's say, oh, it should only be return. Okay. So it's only return and not returns. So if you're going to create the pivot table once again, there we go. The code ran perfectly. Dynamic range. There's the sum of our returns in our dynamic table once again. So guys, this is really awesome stuff. It's going to save you a lot of time regarding pivot tables. And I've hoped this helped you guys as well. Please spread the word. As I said, if you can get to 100 subscribers, I'm going to leave you as a very special episode. Once again, from all my friends from South Africa, from Egypt, I saw from India, from Bangladesh. Guys, thank you very much for tuning into this series. Uh, it's, ver it's very enlightening for me. I enjoy it very much. And let's spread that word. From me, Stone from Accelerate. Cheers.